A couple months ago I got a ping pong table, but then I realized that if I didn't have something automated to practice with, I still wouldn't get to play that much just because, you know, you can't always play with someone else all the time. Um, so I decided that I wanted a ping pong robot, which is a machine that, it's just a machine that shoots ping pong balls so you can return it. Um, so you can buy these. Um, they have them in all sorts of different price ranges, but what I found was that either if you wanted a good one, they were very expensive, um, and the cheaper ones did not have that great features, and based on the reviews, they seemed to be prone to failing. So I decided, uh, why not just go ahead and try to build one? So this is what I came up with. Um, so the basic concept of this thing is, if you've ever if you've ever used a baseball pitching machine, it's a very similar idea. I have two wheels that spin, and as the ball comes down through this curved chute, the wheels will um, shoot the ball forward. Um, so that's a basic idea. The other components of it are you need something to hold the balls, obviously. So that is this hopper on the top. Um, the other thing you need is something to stop the balls so that they don't just come out rapid fire. And I'm going to hide this piece so that you can see the inside. So there's a servo that is connected to a flap. And the servo pushes the flap up about 30 degrees. And when that happens, the ball goes up into this little cutout area and is blocked by this piece. Um, and then when the servo opens up, the flap comes down, and then the ball goes down. In my design, I also have a servo at the base that rotates the whole thing left and right so that it can oscillate or change the angle. Well, I spent a lot of my free time the last couple months cutting out all the parts for the robot from plywood by hand using a little saw and a dremel and a drill. So that was a lot of work, but now it's done um, and I just have the final assembly left. So I think I'll show you that um, that way you can see the wheels and other components that I've used and how it all goes together. All right, this is the main part of the ping pong robot. <clears throat> Sorry, now I have this not taken or not put together all the way. I have one of the wheels installed and then the other one I'm going to show you. So these are radio control car wheels. Um, I believe they're one tenth scale. They have a soft rubber compound <clears throat> um, and they do have a bit of a tread, which I found at first would leave some scuffs in the ball. Um, so I ended up sanding those treads down and that helped with that. So it doesn't it does leave some marks still, but it doesn't actually leave any scratches. Um, so that's okay. And then to mount these things to the shaft, um, let's see if you can see that. So these pieces are little hex adapters for a motor shaft, and so they attach to the hex mount of the wheel right there. So that just um, goes right on like that, and then you screw it in. So let me do that right now. Okay, so I have the two wheels on there, and now the, the next part of this thing is a chute. So this will attach, and um, the balls go in through the top, and then they get directed down through the shaft um, right in between the wheels. So let me attach that now. Right, now I can put on the other side of the launcher.
And there's actually one more part here. So this is the hopper. It just goes on like that. And then I have a couple pins to hold it in place. Now, at first I had um, been hoping to be able to just use a simple hopper where the balls would just roll through. Um, but I found that when I tried to do that, no matter what shape I made it, the balls would always get stuck um, because they would just, you know, there would be like two balls trying to go into the opening at once and they would just block each other. Um, so what I did is I added this small little servo with um, an arm on both sides and this just rotates continuously. It actually goes back and forth um, and that just keeps stirring the balls and that keeps them from getting jammed um, and that has worked quite well. Here are the electronics for the robot. So the main controller is this Arduino in the back corner. So that's the thing that controls the motion of the robot when it drops the ball, things like that. Um, I programmed that myself and I have the code available on GitHub. Um, and I'm not gonna go through it for this video just for sake of time, but um, if you're interested in that, you can look at that. The link is in the description. Um, we have two electronic speed controllers, so here and here, so those each control one of the brushless motors. Um, and those plug in here and here on the circuit board. I have three servos, which plug in here, here, and here. Um, and then other than that, there are four potentiometers on this side, one on this side, so those provide analog inputs to the Arduino. And then I have three switches on this side. Um, so I'll explain what each of those does in a minute when we go down and try it out. All right, I have this down in the basement and I have it set up. Um, it is attached to a tripod, which is by design, that's how I intend it to be mounted. So the tripod will let you angle the whole thing up and down um, to adjust the trajectory of the balls. Um, so let's look at the controls. So here on this side, we have three switches. So we have the start and stop switch, which will make the balls start dropping, motors turn on, things like that. Um, this switch will control whether the thing is gonna oscillate left and right or not. Um, and then the next one will control the mode that it oscillates. So if you have it on the sinusoidal mode, it's just gonna continuously go back and forth, left and right. If you have it on random, then it's gonna do a random left and right rotation. Now this last thing on this side is, this is one of the potentiometers and this is designed to set the pitch angle. Um, so you can imagine if you tilt the whole thing up on the tripod, then this flap servo is gonna have to move faster because the balls will roll down faster past, past that part of the chute. Um, so that's what this control is for. And I have it calibrated so that when this toothpick lines up with the line that is hanging vertically, then it will set the right pitch angle so that the flap moves at the right speed. All right, let's go over to the other side. And on this side we have the two motor throttles. So that'll control the top spin and back spin and also the power by changing those two dials. This one is the oscillation angle. So if you have it in, um, in the mode where it is not oscillating, that will change the actual left and right angle. And if it is oscillating, then that will change the max range of oscillation. And then the last thing is the frequency of the ball drop. So if you turn that up, that'll make them drop faster and vice versa. So I think it's time to actually try this. All right, I have this thing set up ready to go. And uh, for the first test, I think we'll just do a kind of easy mode which means I have each of the throttles set to a kind of low setting. They're each about a bit below 25% and it's angled up 10 or 15 degrees, the whole thing. So it should just kind of lob them over the table without a lot of spin or too much speed. So they shouldn't be too hard to return. And I'm just gonna have a fixed oscillation angle, kind of slow frequency. So yeah, let's try this out. Um, also, I, I put like 20 balls in there. It can definitely hold a lot more than that, but I'm sure you don't want me to bore you um, just watching me return balls all day. So we'll just do a few and then maybe switch things up after that. 
So let me plug this thing in. All right. And now we start it up and run to the other side. Do some backhands. Oops, missed. Back to the forehand. I think that was all. Uh, oh yeah, there's a few that are stuck at the top just since it's angled back so much, so let me fix those. Ooh. All right, got a few more. All right, I think that was it. All right, for the next round, I've made it a bit harder, um, actually probably a lot harder. So I have the angle of the launcher is down a bit, so it's less than 10 degrees now. I've turned the top spin up to about 50 or a little bit over, which is a lot um, because these motors are quite overpowered. Um, I doubt that I'll ever really need to go much above 50. The back spin is zero, so these are gonna be really heavy top spin shots with probably a bit more speed than before too. Um, and then I'm going to have a sinusoidal oscillation on it. Um, so I suspect I'm probably going to have a lot more trouble returning these, but that's why you practice, right? So here we go. Yeah, they really hop off the table from all that spin. Really got to get over top of it to keep it down. There we go. Ooh. Backed up a little bit to give myself some more space and that did help. For this round, I'm going to do something a little bit different and set it up to do serves. So if you're not familiar with the rules of ping pong, a serve is when um, a player has to hit the ball on his own side or her own side and then the other side. So I've, if you can tell from this distance away, um, I've angled the robot down so that it'll bounce on, its, on both sides of the table. Um, and I've also set it up to do backspin. So I turned off the Top throttle, top throttle completely, and the bottom one is set to about 30%, um, which is a decent amount. I'd like to do more, but the problem is doing more will also make it shoot the ball farther. Um, so it's kind of hard to find that middle ground where it will have enough spin, but also not go too far. Um, anyway, besides that, just for fun, I set it to random oscillation and increase the frequency a little bit. So 
Uh, let's give this a try and see how it works. So before I return any, I think I'll just let you watch watch the trajectory and how it kind of wants to stop due to the backspin. So it's definitely not going as far. It's a little hard to set it up for backspin too, where it's angled down. Um, just because of the geometry, you need, need to have enough of an angle for them to actually roll down the chute. Oh, when returning backspin, the ball wants to go down off your paddle into the net. So you've either got to get under it with a push like this, or if you're going to top spin it, you get really got a lot of, get a lot of top spin. All right, well, I think that's all the testing I'll do. Um, you've seen basically what this thing can do. It's, uh, yeah, I'm definitely pretty happy with it. It is quite capable, more capable than me, which is good because that means I have a lot of room to improve. Um, if there's one thing I could change, which I think I probably will end up changing, um, that is just, you might've noticed that this thing is kind of wobbly um, due to having all this weight sitting on top of the oscillation servo there. So that's probably not the greatest design. Um, I'll probably change that, but I'll save that for a later video. So I'm going to end it here, um, but I'll conclude with me just hitting balls for a few minutes. So stick around if you want to watch that. Otherwise, talk to you later.